really look forward towards chatting up on marketplace concept life is a marketplace too <laughs> <laughs> we will yes, not go there awesome. <laughs> okay we are cool now we have arrived there yet <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, why don't we hear him? <laughs> no, let him finish. Let him finish. <laughs> because anyway, he's going to take my case. Most of the uh, the entire podcast. Let me go on the ones where I can take his case. <laughs> So I don't know what he saw in that idea. He just cut a check that same evening the way he met me in the morning. So <laughs> he decided. I mean, obviously we went through the IC processes. So um, it was actually a, like I would personally to me I think probably it was the most uh, theoretical way of saying that okay this would work right. So we started off like that right. And uh, when we started off like that, essentially you know you're going to an enterprise client right. Uh, enterprise client would operate probably. You know, over fifty to fifty like locations in the country, and they'll ship to probably four hundred locations, right? So we would go sign up some five locations, which are like you know, two will be in north, three will be in south. We'll take up that demand, and from there we'll get few lanes of demand. So like that, essentially, you know, the demand you know array which we had sort of in like three four months together, right, was basically a demand which is emanating from anywhere and going to anywhere, right? So essentially, not in any right pattern, right? The second thing is that now to generate supply for those particular you know lanes and demand, right? We again had to go probably almost like Pan India to get supply, right? So the problem which we essentially wanted to solve, which was basically the intercity trucking problem, because of the product market fit which we tried to sort of you know create, was like a very tough problem to solve, right? Because demand is from everywhere, supply is from everywhere. Now you can't like deploy all the resources across the country to generate supply. You can't deploy all the resources across the country to generate all the demand, right? Because you need to go step by step, right? So that was probably like one of the like your first biggest friction points as a company which we encountered, right? On top of it, number two, right? Because all of us see a marketplace, let's say where uh, you know, let's say all of us are very closer to a you know cabs marketplace, right? You get in, like the ride gets over, right? Let's say in like you know half an hour to one hour, right? And you pay the money and you move out, right? In the B two B marketplace, right? The enterprise clients don't pay you upfront, right? You need to basically you know get the delivery done and then you need to invoice it to them and then they'll pay later, right? So there is a big working capital element which comes into this particular entire transaction, right? That's second, right? The third thing is that uh, again because cabs is a marketplace that everybody you know closer to trucking understands. I'm comparing and contrasting to that, right? In cabs, like let's say a cab will be of a particular city. Like let's say the driver will live in that city and he would want to earn his entire earnings in that city. And if you are taking a cab, you want to you want a cab to go within the city, right? So you could break down like a cab's marketplace logically, let's say into cities and like go after them, right? An intercity marketplace, like first of all, the number of truck operators, let's say who own trucks, are about three million, right? And these truck operators live in every district of the country, right? And if you go to let's say a Tamil Nadu village, a village in Tamil Nadu, let's say assuming Namakkal or Salem, right? Truckers from there will go to every part of the country. So if you go on one supply village, they would a full hundred percent of that supply village will need demand all across the country. If you aggregate, and if you go into a city like Delhi and you say that hey, where do you need trucks to? They will say the shippers of Delhi will need trucks to all over the country. So the, the the third biggest problem was that intercity trucking, right? You know, had to be or let's say even now, right? We believe in that has to be cracked pan India to pan India. Because like you can't modular modularize it and say that I will win one city, convert density, become a bit of profitable suppliers will double their earnings, right? So that that you know methodical uh, city by city approach which can be followed in other marketplaces cannot be followed in trucking, right? You had to go pan India to pan India, right? So these were let's like, say you know from the idea we were starting to versus you know what these like sort of challenges came across. Led to the first, you know, enterprise PMF of the marketplace, right? Scale only to a particular extent, and then obviously, you know, we had to figure out things, and then we, we are, as we speak, we are still solving. But yes, yeah, so this was the start, and these were the challenges which, you know, ensured that. So, so if you look, take any marketplace, right? A marketplace when it starts to work, right? Uh, the incremental value when you add any additional participants on any sides, incremental value to the marketplace keeps accentuating, right? And we had mega friction much before we hit that state. For example, every hundred truckers we used to add to the platform a month, right? After like six months, only six seven used to be active because relevant demand was not available. 
for all of them, right? Because I would go into a village, I'll staff that village to onboard all these guys. But I don't have demand from Calcutta. And this trucker has gone to Calcutta and needs demand. He's like, okay, this platform is not giving me demand. So they are they wean away, right? Now, enterprise side, given that we've had an enterprise business, that enterprise demand cohorts are very strong. But literally, a marketplace concept is where both sides are like seamlessly working, seamlessly pushing into, you know, the volumes each other. Both of them incrementally are making more money, right? Experience is enhancing, right? So that with the first PMF, like, you know, we couldn't sort of, you know, achieve that. But but yeah, so those were the beginnings, uh, you know, Pankaj. What yeah. a beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Anand? He didn't no. tell me all this at that time, man. <laughs> <laughs> you waited a long yeah, time to yeah. share this. No, no, no. How, how, how was that? And, and with this kind of a chaos uh, <laughs> that is there, it's difficult to imagine something would come out of it. No, so, so my, my uh, think like I'm a big believer in marketplaces in general and it takes time to figure out uh, the PMF in some of these cases, right? So that's what Rajesh is highlighting. So they really knew the problem. So he was working at ITC and he was that enterprise and he needed the truck. So he saw the problem, right, exists. So he was working with a lot of brokers to get the truck. So you saw that side of the problem, said, started it with uh, people he knew, right? So, and then when he came and articulated the problem, it was very clear that he really understood the problem and the way they wanted to solve it. And then I had just fresh, uh, freshly come out of the cab industry at that time. Ooh. We had invested in uh, Taxi for Sure, okay. Raghu, who's an advisor to Blackbuck as well, and then a big... Uh, help over time for to many of the startups I work with. So he understood the marketplace. We understood the marketplace from that journey. So we compared it to that. I at least compared it to that and said, if you can apply tuck, uh, technology and product to cab industry, can we try the same thing in trucking? That's when we, as we went through the journey, we realized some of the things that Rajesh talked about. It's not, in hindsight, it all looks very clear. But when you start out, it's not easy to think through how do you get supply? How do you test that the supply and demand, you're adding value as a platform. And how do you do that in a tight test bed, right? To hit PMF, all these in hindsight seems easy. So the reason we're sharing all this is so that for the founders who are listening, think through all this, right? When you're starting out itself, so that you don't know, make the known mistakes. <laughs> There's always unknown mistakes, which is okay. Yeah. But can we, with both of you, and, yeah. and this is a great point, launch pad <laughs> for, for the for the follow on questions. You, you talked about PMF uh, journey and, and you are talking about in B2B marketplaces, it can be a far more complex. I'm, I'm not comparing, but it yeah. seems to be that way. Can you go deeper uh, into the building blocks of what happened when, when he realized this is what a P, the PMF is? Uh, what was that journey before you actually got to a point wherein you said, okay, we are cool now. This is we just can not autopilot, but there is a path. We were right there yet. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are driving towards it on the truck. Yeah. But, but, but what are the important things for a marketplace founder I think, to uh, yeah. look at? I think the more important thing is to figure out you can scale fast in a B2B marketplace, especially if there's an ITC that wants to give you a lot of demand. You can go service that demand and you can try to, as you talked about from uh, Salem to Kashmir somewhere, like you can have uh, trucks coming from all over. And But the thing is the density is not there for either the supply or the demand, for it to be sticky, right? So you'll have to understand that density is needed on both sides and so that the liquidity is high on the marketplace. So that took us some time to realize, right? So that is one. And the other problem Rajesh talked about is the working capital thing. In consumer world, we are used to paying for any service. In the enterprise world, they're used to not paying, right? So, <laughs> or pay 30 days later, like so. So all the, uh, like you really need to understand the working capital cycles, how are you going to finance that? So you can scale very fast, but then you're stuck with revenue that's still uh, in the conversion process into cash. So these are all things uh, that took us time to realize. And then from there you take over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'll uh, break uh, these like into, you know, various points, right? Let's say first, let's take supply, right? Uh, supply in India is coming from people who are in the demography age group of like 40 to 60 years old, have, uh, you know, one to three trucks and live in villages and are like probably the last 100 million internet users, like who have come to internet, they're the last ones, right? So who are still like, this is, we're talking about 2016, 17, right? And uh, like th and these guys, when we started as a business, 40-50% uh, of them only had smartphones, the rest did not. Today, obviously, 100% of them have smartphones, right? And, uh, you know, so, so, so demography is this. That's first, like, big, like, challenge, right? You need to build for that demography, right? Second is that, you know, 
uh, even if they are coming online, right? If they're coming and using your app, right? As I was mentioning, right? Let's say, assuming that you're going to make your supply investments in, let's say, you know, let's say for, for, for now, let's say five districts, right? Limited. Now, these five districts go all over the country. All these suppliers. Some are used to going to Calcutta, some are used to going to Delhi, some are used to going to Gujarat. Which means, if you are investing in acquiring that supply, you need the other demand also, True. right? So, as a smaller small company, getting to even 1-2% to of the country's demand takes a long time, right? Because like, then you have already become a very large player, right? So, that was, so hence, if you look at the supply building block, right? The problem is who they are, demography, they learning technology, trusting technology. Even after assuming that it's such a high utility product, they will get their earnings, right? They will definitely learn and come to it. But then after every time they log in, they are not able to find a load. The remembrance goes down. So essentially, like churning of the cords, right? So you, so first sign on the supply side, you always need to look at is that the supply you're bringing on board, are they getting value? And if they get value, they 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 essentially would retain. And if they are retaining, their like uh, earnings per user is going to increase. So you need to sort of observe that the classical you know supply side of the cards, right? For us, as I was breaking down the problem, these were not looking great, right? We had high churn, right? Because these guys were not finding the same frequency of loads which they really expected, and we were on a much stronger supply acquisition roadmap which was not getting supported. That's on supply side, right? Now on the other side, the demand part, right? Demand side, you know, uh, there is like there can be two type of marketplaces, right? One is free marketplaces, like let's say in, in case of consumer where they come and order regardless of a contract, right? You fire the app, you can go to Uber, you can go to Ola, and depending on your frequency of service, right? On the on the business side, these were contracts. So which means for the next one month or six months or 12 months, they're logged in with you. So they'll keep giving you demand at a particular fixed price, right? So you can measure demand cohorts, but they look brilliant always, right? But what is important to recognize is that, you know, uh, these guys are working for you because of what reason? Is it because of your reliability of supply? Or you have undercut your other competitors so much that they are just, you know, getting better discounts so they are using you, right? So when you are in execution ability to, so for us, demand side data always used to look very good, right? We were doing really great on cohorts. They used to really love our service. They used to love our technology. They used to love our tracking product, right? Like, because it was, it was like largely we digitized the entire supply chain. So they were getting a lot of value from us, right? So even if you look at how shippers are shipping with us over year after year, all of them are increasing their volumes and moving the lanes towards us, right? So we had a very strong sort of a fit on the, you know, demand side, right? The third aspect is again cash flow, as Anand mentioned, right? Working capital, right? Now, if you are putting money into this business, remember that you're financing somebody's cash flows, right? Yeah. So you need to know that, you know, which side, so you're essentially putting your money into business and you're getting your money later, right? So probably for about 30% of the, you know, customers, both on demand and supply side, were working with us because their cash flows were being, you know, handled by us because they were getting better cash flows from us, right? So when all this essentially is getting executed, right? What is really important, you know, for like, which, which let's say today, obviously we've learned, you know, uh, over the last seven years, right? So it's important to really view as what is the marketplace adding value to all these participants? What are the right metrics to look at, right? And, and essentially like if you summarize this, right? If supply churn is so high, you really have a leaky marketplace, right? So, and you can't really scale your demand demand with these contracts in such a way that you you know you get 10% of india's demand on the platform and then supply cost starts stabilizing right so by 2018 right we were very clear or 2017 early i would say we were very clear that for our marketplace right demand only loads demand scaling at that like breakneck speed at which we are scaling supply is not possible right and that was one thing which we had to solve it and this is one problem i think which you know uh, is very unique about our marketplace that what we started doing right because because like you know frankly probably we had this hunch from 2016 itself 17 the problem became bigger so we noticed that right so from 2016 onwards we knew that for a trucker he may get a load once in two months or once in a month or once in three months from us. But is there something we can provide more that he sticks to the platform and we solve his life, we solve problems of his life, right? So we had launched in 2015, 2016 early fuel cards, which gave him like, you know, bargain discounts, right? Volume discounts. We launched toll card by 16 late, which let's say ensures that India was 2016, 100% was in cash. 
electronic tolling came into in 2019. So 2016, we launched it for the truckers, right? 2017, uh, like 2000, around 18, we launched telematics as a test product, right? So we started doing a lot of things for supply around so that even they don't get a load, they get stuck, they, 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 like they are sticky on the platform. There is value with it, right? So that led us by 2018, 19 to launch a full-fledged fleet management business, which essentially was all about other than loads, right? And that actually, if I, if I look from a retrospection perspective, right, is today the core of the business, number one, right? That is the reason why supply remembers us comes to on our platform, like let's say, you know, we are an app today, which is like with like 70% of India's truckers, right? 30% of them, 35% of them open our app every month, right? And 25% of them, like 20% of India, right? Transact on the app every month, right? And that is because of the bed of the sub fleet management solutions, which are essentially not marketplaces, right? So in marketplace, you need to have demand and supply matching at the same time. And these are very hard to build and you need densities playing out on both the sides for a really long time, right? If you break this down, so you know that that's something which is unique about us, which I can speak about. So if you, what we did is essentially we broke this two-way marketplace into for supply a linear solution, I gave him a toll tag, right? The toll tag, hard toll tag is on the truck. Now he uses the Blackbuck app to recharge that tag, right? He has an onboard GPS device. Now he's managing his driver. He uses the app to fire, to fire the app to sort of, you know, check whether where his driver is, where his truck is, is the driver is doing harsh acceleration, harsh braking, right? So basically we converted a two-way marketplace journey into supply more a linear journey where you acquire supply for, not for marketplace, for something else. So when you acquire your five-year retention rates are 70%, right? From before six months, 6%, six, nine percent to, to like, you know, five-year retention rate of 70% is what we converted, broke the problem down because we knew that to build the trucking marketplace, we need to go pan-India, pan-India. So with a, with a solution, which is like payments, telematics, right? We went pan-India. We basically, we today have present in every district, right? So every district, every village, which is relevant from a trucking perspective, like we have people, we have like, you know, telesales, we have digital. So it's a, it's an omni-channel strategy to go after every village in the country to acquire, you know, truckers, right? And that happens on a non-marketplace way, which is like linear solutions, right? And then we are like, which is basically, you know, 2020, like, like mid 2020, which is like we used COVID also as one of the, as the kick, sort of a, you know, leapfrog thing into moving into higher scale on a marketplace. Enterprise PMF, we expanded, you expanded that and evolved into not only enterprises, but also SMEs, but also 3PLs, also transporters, anyone and everyone who has demand can post their demand, right? So which means enterprise, we had to put working capital, others we didn't have to put working capital, right? So they can post a load and take a truck, so, and you know, scaling supply, we're doing that any which ways, regardless of that marketplace problem, right? So this was our sort of, you know, an antidote to like, you know, are all the problems together, which we were like really not able to scale and like, you know, sort of build out in a very easy way, split it out, level one, solve for supply, regardless of the marketplace, and then scale demand on top of it. That was our strategy towards solving this. So this, this is done in other marketplaces also. You provide a tool that is useful for either supply or demand, most likely supply, yeah. right? So let's say ticketing in a even bright kind of a situation, like if you, if you can, provide a tool that is very powerful and helpful. So in this case, payment solutions, right? So fuel cards and toll cards and also GPS for tracking the trucks. And then you scale that to be one of the leaders. So when you have enough supply, so you've built the supply side and then demand comes and sees if, if the supply is tough to find, then you make the marketplace work from day one, right? And you're monetizing the supply. So you're already a monetized marketplace. So your cost of uh, matching the supply and demand goes down. So it's a, it's a very, in hindsight, it looks all beautiful and everything. I wish we had known that. So <laughs> that's hopefully the learning. So think about if you can't get your supply and demand in a tight way, like uh, we've talked to Swiggy, right? So I'm sure people go and look at it. You can figure it out in a Koramangla. There is supply, there is demand, like and demand, and demand is consumer. So it's hundreds of or thousands of people. So there's fragmented, both supplied and demand is fragmented. Whereas here it was concentrated demand, which is enterprises who have the higher power to say that I'll only pay you this way. That as a consumer can't say I'll pay you in 30 days. Like <laughs> you won't get the food. <laughs> yeah. right? so all these are yeah. in hindsight easy learning. So and then you can in a tight test bed of Koramangla you can see if a problem if the solution is working. 
whereas here like there's no such no. concept we tried it also yeah. we tried creating artificial oh, test no. beds yeah. corridors that, all that that's doesn't what my work. next yeah. thing is because yeah. test beds are, are something else we have been discussing yeah. Yeah. and it would be uh, great to understand it through the b2b marketplace lens especially from your journey from this journey in particular uh what about the proverbial uh, see, test bed see, basically when we were uh, you know uh, basically when i when i telling the story we were actually like in 2017 when those problems were coming in 1718 and then i actually fast forwarded it to 2021 2021 in between was where we what we started doing is that it's an intercity marketplace right at the end of the day a supply like let's say travels multiple different locations but let's ignore that is there a self sufficient corridor right where we can like you know so what we chose which chose is we chose a northwest corridor right saying that all the cities are north and all cities in west right between them india's 35% of the shipping happens is that why you picked it yeah that's the reason we picked it it's the, it's the largest right and we said that even though the fms journey is helping us locking supply let us only do fms in northwest fleet management fleet management right the fleet management journey right selling toll tags selling you know fuel cards selling gpss let's do only in northwest right go deeper and and generate enterprise demand generate sme demand generate every type of demand only in one corridor right so we did that right uh, but i think i think you know in terms of scalability of the marketplace again i was you know mentioning right like Though the thirty-five percent of demand was co, like let's say, is, was originating in that particular market, right? For an SME guy, let's say, who's sitting in Karnal is is shipping, let's say, rice, right? He is also shipping all over the country. Now he cannot use your app only for the West Corridor, right? Now these truckers, they were for about six months to seven months in this corridor. For the remaining five six months, they used to go to East Corridor, right? Right. So basically, you know, you need to be relevant for both side of the customers. and if you are not and you are not adding value and you are not solving that pain point right you essentially you know even like you know assuming that at during initial scale we all know that marketplaces like absorb a lot of money right though like you can sit relaxed that okay we are, i'm building that entire scale but you what you end up building is more you know a fluff sort of a kind of a revenue and once you take off incentives and try to make money that essentially comes down <laughs> So this is fascinating, and Anand and Rajesh, both of you, right? The other day uh, we were discussing with with Swiggy, uh, the, the the team org structure and all of that, uh, and when we are talking uh, all the mechanics and building blocks, uh, you know, I, I'm wondering <laughs> what happens on that side of things. Uh, every you know, from your PMF journey to the test bed, can you spend a minute or two on on, on lessons there? And Anand, it would be great to look at it through your lens, lens as well. See, basically, uh, you know. Uh, Um, for us right because uh, any test bed for us right the smallest test bed for us was a zone right a corridor right that was smallest but intercity business no so you go you if you say bangalore is my test bed you have shipper is not in bangalore no you have shipper is everywhere else like a demand which is emanating from bangalore like let's say 50 to for bangalore specifically right 50 to 60% of demand will be enterprise demand who will not be sitting in bangalore number 1 right number 2 the remaining sme demand half of the orders will be coming from shippers sitting outside bangalore and ordering from bangalore right so to generate the demand you cannot be in bangalore similarly the truckers like karnataka is not a major state from a ownership of trucks right local bangalore outbound demand is served by 80% non bangalore registered trucks So to generate this supply, you need to go to a you know DL zero seven, RJ zero nine, RTO. You can't generate that demand over here, that that supply over here, right? So essentially, for us, the lowest test bed will always a corridor, right? Now, when there is a corridor, even if you win the corridor, you are winning thirty percent of India, right? So it's not like a test bed. No. Okay. So then, what you do is that in our case, right, the, in the in our org structure, what essentially we had done at that point in time, like let's say when you are doing this test bed of this corridor, right? Everybody, be it a uh, the business head for fleet management systems, is doing the entire experiment in Northwest. Be it the head of enterprise is hundred percent prioritizing the Northwest business, right? Be it the head of, and and the head of uh, SME business is only doing Northwest, right? So essentially, there were different business units, right? Business head for uh, you know enterprise, business head for SME, business head for fleet management solutions. All of them have prioritized their charters. Some of them 100% doing it for that corridor, or some of them prioritizing, saying, "Okay, first I will pick up only those contracts in my prioritization." Right. So that's how we aligned the structure, and obviously the other functional logs, product org, everything, everybody is executing, you know, for that. So for us, it was really not a test bed. It was more like this is the only way, and you need to go about it and make that successful. Yeah. 
yeah i think there are businesses where test bits are not possible so that's what <laughs> we need to realize yeah. and then you then you need to realize how do you get at least one side of the demand is not going to come if there's no supply so how do you get enough supply so that it's interesting for demand to start coming right so that's what they've tried tried to and to, and to add and to add to this right let's yeah. say as i was mentioning right the first pmf was enterprise centric because of our own imagination right so when the company was formed right let's say probably till third year right 2018 right 2018 i still remember uh 5% of the company's people were on the supply side of the org 95% were doing activities which were more demand led so we were largely a demand led company which basically had lot of bruises fell like got up everything and realized that we are a business which is largely supply led right and then we mutated into a dna today right where today 95 to 99% of the people work on the supply side 1% work on the demand side because if we know how to work with supply demand comes that's what we realized right and 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 on this right i will throw one more point which has always been asked to me by a lot of people that hey supply is important or demand is important how does it work with marketplaces right like it it's important that you need to know what your where, where, what your fulcrum is and our fulcrum is supply right we realized that you know through lot of ups and downs right second what is important to know is demand is you know demand is more important supply is more important at that junction during the entire dynamically when your supply you know when your market is evolving because one month you'll actually you know go down and supply there'll be more demand right three months down the line it'll be the completely other situation so ability to know that pulse continuously so one is you need to know your fulcrum where you need to start your business always with second is in that really understanding the dynamic nature of demand and supply simple example right in our marketplace when there are rains right supply retention cohorts depth everything increases because when there are rains demand is less all supply all truckers are stuck they are just you know frantically wanting a next order right so like the all the supply side metrics are up right or oh, and when there are rains shippers are shipping less because they don't ship the material which will get damaged right and and like number of days of working are less production drops like uh, industrial production also drops so demand metrics tank right and gender suddenly when there is uh, you know let's say diwali right so, like, shippers are like frantically looking for trucks right and there is no supply because all supply is busy uh, all supply is saying boss give me you know normal rate is 100 i'll go at only at 120 right so basically you know uh, demand and supply are uh, like there there is never a or equation in running a marketplace there's a and equation sensing every day right what is really playing out in which way and having you know your own like internal framework to be able to maneuver to like keeping the marketplace always buoyant always going always fulfilling the needs is the job of the you know entire marketplace like rule engine and everything uh, anand uh, in this mm-hmm. what are the two three most important signals uh, e- even when he is talking about it's not a, you know it is and it's not either supply or demand in, in that sense from what you have seen his journey uh, what helps a founder you know with this conviction or journey no no first of all figuring out this like so the, yeah, like instead of hey, unfortunately some of these cases you have to go through the journey just knowing that rain will affect this way you don't know have a season in north versus like yeah. when when things happen and all the trucks move north south east climate west changes. right like all that not even climate change nothing no complication just purely when apples are harvested in uh, somewhere yeah, you were yeah. saying he used to explain we get a sense for where, how the gdp <laughs> operates in india to trucking as a business right so you see where the trucks are going so knowing the nuances of the industry is very important and also the other thing which is uh, important is to understand the value chain so there's a shipper there's a broker uh, there's a transporter there is a like broker and and then you're connecting so trying to disintermediate or go direct to one or the other in some industries is not that easy right so if you want to talk more about that that is a learning that we learned also so some like as the it goes without saying the more you and he was in the industry he was shipping it's not like he didn't know all this was happening still when you actually operate a marketplace is when you realize the size of the market exists but the profit pools are in some of the markets are very defined and it goes to certain places and the cash flow the way things operate is not easy to change so it's important to understand both those sides so if a broker is taking 
right? And to say that I'll bypass that and keep the 10 is not an easy thing because the broker might be taking that 10% because he's providing the working capital that is required. Like all these uh, things and there are more also. He's what the right the, person. Yeah, this yeah. is fascinating yeah. because yeah. a lot of time we yeah. think of, inter, you know, remove the intermediary. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. What are some of the nuances here? Yeah, I think... Um, my like very like top level uh, view on uh, intermediaries and like you know marketplaces etc is that like India like let's say a lot of markets from outside in they appear to be like you know damn definitely they appear unorganized and they with the term unorganized we also add the term inefficient typically right and then typically when you go in and really understand right definitely is unorganized and with tech you can organize it and lift the you know entire like you know sort of the way it is operating from a seamlessness perspective in a different level but these are actually running very efficiently right that local broker like local transporter who's essentially operating the entire business right has probably like say will have very like you know few number of people is he's not really you know um, uh, catering to any kind of labor regulations etc so he'll be like say on an average he'll be hiring a person at probably like 6000 7000 rupees right and like the literal efficiencies in that business would be actually too many right because he's operating it locally over there right now like you like you come in and then you sort of apply this entire scaled framework that you know I'll bring everything into technology I'll spend all this administrative cost and lift this off right there is, you need to have a very solid reason why that liftoff will happen, right? So I think that's my big disclaimer. It's a great point you uh, were making, uh, Rajesh, right? I mean, they may be uh, unorganized, but not necessarily inefficient, like uh, Anand added. So can you go deeper in it? I mean, what do you mean? Simple, right? Let's say, assuming that, uh, you know, there is a wheat trader, right? In a mandi, right? Now, that wheat trader in a mandi, uh, you know, does not even have any concrete roof on top of him, Right? He's working probably on a tarpaulin shop somewhere, right? So simple, right? And then he has a chotu along with him, right? Who is probably, you know, who probably he'll be paying maybe 4K, 5K because he needs only that much in that village, right? So when you organize this setup, right? You put an office, you have an org structure, you have people, right? And you in the end have the access to the same profit pool which he has access to, right? So these guys like essentially these guys PNL would always look much better than a PNL of an organized market, right? Unless there is a non-linearity of the technology which ensures there's a price improvement, right? Or there is a cost reduction because of technology. Until those non-linear factors because of technology are coming into the business model, right? There would be, it would be very difficult to beat Indian SMEs and organize this business, right? Because they are unorganized, but in that way they are efficient. Right. And like my last journey to the trucking market, exactly two months before, I think when I was there in August in Delhi, right. I was with a, trans a truck owner with whom, uh, to whom we had gone to sell loads and our tolling solutions saying that you come on, get onboarded. The before the visit, like the visit before this, which our sales officer had done, he had a mini, you know, six feet by six feet, you know, like a, a red brick office. When we reached that office was not there because it was built on an illegal uh, plot, right. So how he was operating was with a two, two like, you know, wooden uh, sticks, tarpaulin is tied over it. And uh, he's like, yeah, sit, this is my office. And there are like two plastic chairs below, right? Now, so that, he's operating from there. He's a truck owner? He's a truck owner. <laughs> he's a truck owner with three trucks, right? He's operating from there. So now, and, and he does not have any shame, right? Now, let's say you organize this, you will not be able to hire even a single guy. You have an office like that who will join you, right? So that's the power of Indian SME, right? So... So I think business models trying to build as a layer on top of it are great, but I think it's really important to really understand what efficiencies they are bringing on board and you need to benchmark and beat that. And on top of it, using technology, bring non-linearity in the business model, be it let's say for us, it's going to be discovery of a truck at a place where he's not getting a load, right? And give him that load. So where his per day, he's losing 5,000 rupees if his truck is idling. Give him the load and the value from there you have to extract, right? So, so until there's a non-linearity, like let's say of, of the technology solution kicking in into the PNL, right? Defeating or building a PNL more richer than an Indian SME is a very difficult. Uh, wow, there's a humbling experience. Yeah, right? Very humbling, and, and, and I think very yeah. candid that that you that you accept it. And Anand, this this is a pattern. I mean, in in especially in a businesses like this. Uh, it's important to understand as entrepreneurs, like to ask these questions, right? Is is it an inefficient business? Yes, it's unorganized, but is it inefficient because of 
lack of technology is an important question to ask. You also have to ask what's the profit pools available? How much is the unorg- the unorganized guy making? And is there any reason why there's going to be more demand you're going to bring to him and hence lifting his overall revenue and taking something from that as a marketplace? Like parallel is the Uber, Ola, exact taxi for sure. All these got more sup- more supply and more demand. Right. Then if you can get more demand, more supply comes, that's a easy one to understand. Here, if they're already operating at a reasonably efficient thing and that uh, the cabs used to operate at 40, 50 percent efficiency, right? Or restaurants, the number of deliveries was very less. Like so in those cases, the same supply can cater to more demand. That's increase in the revenue side. So here, if it's not the case, you can't go just because tech is there, you can't go and increase it. And also, and without increasing, you can't take more profits out of the existing profit pool. Wow. So th- those are things you need to really understand when you're building these and, B2B. And I think there are two classes of businesses, right? Let's say there are creation businesses, right? And there are like offline online businesses, right? So as Anand mentioned, right? Let's say the food delivery business is a creation business because it didn't exist. It created a new market, right? Yes. Cabs, nobody was taking for a point to point ride a cab, right? So they're creation businesses, right? So in creation businesses, you're not displacing anyone. Right, incumbency in, as in yeah, there's no there are no incumbents, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, and there are like offline online businesses, right. Let's say in our case, right, that demand was served by a architecture of you know multiple brokers, right. So that that demand was coming from offline to online, right. Let's say so there are like so you need to understand like what characteristics is the sort of demand sort of forming, and who is serving that today. And if there is someone who's serving that today, what does the cost structures look like? And what are your cost structures? So I think, you know, that's the sort of logical thought of really studying this out. And uh, on, on a more final <laughs> you know, note with this conversation, the other thing with marketplaces is also uh, how to keep everyone happy. And, and happiness translates to loyalty and, and everything that we've been discussing. It, it, it's not a philosophical question, but in this case, especially, it sounds like a far more tough uh, question uh, to answer, right? So, so in your experience, uh, how has that been? And not just supply, but demand as well on both the sides. See, I think as I like as I was mentioning before as well, right? Uh, there's no choice. Both sides have to be happy, otherwise marketplace will collapse, right? Number one, right? And both sides have to be happy at all the time, right? <laughs> yeah, because because at every point in time, one 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 side drops, so you need to pick it up back up. The other side drops, right? so that's important. Right? Second part is I think uh, you know uh, life is generally fair, and uh, people in general accept fair practices, right? So you need to create practices which are like fair on the marketplace platform, right? Like, let's say, even coming from a such an unorganized sector like trucking, right? If let's say 100 truckers were raising a complaint against not being able to like, let's say, get their full payments, etc., which are, let's say, not fully regulated on the platform, we're able to solve 85% of them, you know, by intervention, which means generally, you know, fairness in policies, principles is like, you know, always appreciated on both the sides, right? Good point. And, and uh, you know, uh, and hence, like, I think coming back to that, I think marketplaces, like the reason that A, like they take time to build, right? Number two, they take a lot of investment and like, you know, a lot of hard work to build. And even after they're built, they're in dynamic equilibrium, right? They are not in like, you know, static equilibrium. Like they'll be continuously falling up, down, up, down, right? Let's say, and you need to be continuously vigilant and about sort of managing it, right? So I think... Uh, yeah, I mean, you need to both be both sides happy all the time with fair policies, transparent policies, which are called out how the marketplace is going to operate. And how do you measure this? Is it classical churn uh, kind of metric? Simple, or what like, is it? Uh, like, uh, like, you, like uh, cohorts and usage on both sides, like retention and usage on both the sides. Is the NPS equivalent? Yeah, that's here? what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically, uh, you know, there is uh, what, how we, you know, how we measure typically is that we, like when because we've operated the enterprise business full stack fully managed marketplace you know for a long period of time right so we've got like you know sort of uh, data on typically how many issues you know arise beat on the demand side on the supply side so you've got that benchmarks right so if the issues are below that level and resolution of those issues are happening at a particular level we're taking care of the bad flows right and second as you rightly said anand right on both the sides there is a clear uh, satisfaction score on the transactions which are you know taken transaction by transaction and that satisfaction essentially gives us the feedback indicator into how it is sort of behaving yeah Anand anything to add here no I I think you'll have to have patience in uh, B2B businesses 
right so if you're in a hurry to scale it's it's a tricky one right because uh, you need to understand all the seasonality you're not dealing with consumer preferences on one side you're dealing with it. like for some people it might come naturally and then you're not necessarily dealing with concentrated either supply or demand so and then there's working capital like all the things that we discussed so you need to understand that this will take time so you need to have the patience and we're talking about not small markets these are like uh, logistics itself is 100 billion plus market yes. right of spend right so it's very large but profit pools are already very efficient so you'll have to figure out how to get to the right pools and then really add value like the tolling and payments and other things that they've solved adds value so then then it becomes sticky and to quest yeah yeah and basically i think in marketplaces right which are uh, again our example offline to online marketplaces where creation is not happening number one number two like you've got enterprise on one side which is highly demanding right i think for us obviously we tried 100 things what worked is only 10 right and i'll tell you the characteristics of these 10 right wherever we tried to forcefully display someone that was always unprofitable business right <laughs> wherever there was a window of opportunity open where people were not serving let's say there is a solution which is not being offered and it's a new age solution like let's say you know that's where entry was very easy to go in right for example right let's say in in the gamut of all the solutions what worked really efficiently for us was the tolling solution tolling was just you know getting installed in the country truckers wanted you know somebody to teach them how to do tolling how to put money into a wallet right 60 to 70% of our users would have opened their internet banking accounts after signing up with us they did not know how to transfer money into them this was back then in 2017 18 when upi was not mainstream oh yes <laughs> right so like 70% of our onboarding used to happen when our sales officer used to go to the local branch open their account get them signed up for internet banking then use they used to transfer money into the tag and then work with us right so th- that's like one part of it second part of it is that let's say truckers were not willing to change their preferred provider of a load on day one right where they used to throw you up is saying that ki yahan idhar like this is where i don't get a load right you 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 give it to me here right so ability to like cater to the pockets which is unserved by both the demand and supply is what using technology you should be able to solve right so directly going to a trucker and and dream that he'll become your power user will has never happened for us how it has happened for us first he's used our toll tag because he never had it when he had the toll tag demand used to keep getting published right when he used to not have access to loads then he used to check the app yeah so where he did not have access we became his partner second second stage of the journey became that okay i i will get loads wherever let's say i don't have access to loads second is i have access to loads but let me use them for a better price <laughs> then you become the deeper part of their journey right next level of the users it's like this works like a charm for all the loads i will use this <laughs> so this is the journey of how a user became our user right so you know my piece of advice would be that like you know because if you are transforming such a big market it won't come easy you will only be thrown at problems which are tough for them if it's easy for them they will not give it to you because they already have relationships right same e- equation for demand wherever he does not get trucks he will put that load on the platform which means it's a much harder thing for your platform to solve on day one offline guys are getting the loads on which trucks are available you are getting the loads on which there are no trucks available right and then your technology has to search and figure out that particular truck for him so both sides we started where they didn't have serviceability solved that problem yeah. right from there became like let's say the partner of choice for those bad routes from them from there became a partner of choice to comp- price comparison from there became a partner of choice to be it, it, it becoming the mainstream right so today like let's say assuming that 100 truckers use our marketplace platform right all those 100 truckers top 30% it's the mainstream they think about a load they fire the black bag app and they start transacting right on the shipper side the top 35% of the people are like that right and the bottom ones are still like you know evolving through these phases right so so what i would say is that you know and we and again right let's say when we were doing those 100 things we didn't know what those 10 things are so it's a journey you need to go through all those 100 things right getting bruised getting up like succeeding a bit failing a bit i think all this part of the game right i think you need to go through all this process you'll feel like all of us will figure out their own 10 and those 10 will like help help you sort of get across the bridge
the ten commandments <laughs> <laughs> wonderful i mean <laughs> you know i think what what i like in particular about this journey anand and rajesh of course is is i think there is it's not a fancy business like any other business building a fancy business and the earthiness uh, that you combine with uh, science and art of building such a uh, com- complex uh, you know solving such a complex problem is amazing i mean i mean really power to you and uh, anand i mean great lens you offered uh, looking at his journey uh, you know a lot of time people say it's such a chaotic business i'm losing my uh, head and hair <laughs> but if anything it's really long hair <laughs> <laughs> so this hides my receded hairline <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but there is nirvana yeah. so it's so a good more power to you and yeah. wonderful talking thank yeah. you thank, thank you. you thank you so thanks. much yeah. thanks guys